Greetings, seekers after enlightenment. Yes, it's the Irish fella. And I'm jumping out here in a sort of non-standard format because I just came from seeing the Joker movie. And I had to share my impressions of it with you. Now, fair warning, this is sort of a stream of consciousness rant with spoilers. Though I, I did remember to put that in the title and description, so I hope you're not disappointed. But I, I had to share my impressions of this movie with you. To start out, the, the hero, Arthur, he is not having a a really good life. Right in the beginning, we see that he's forcing himself to act or appear happy. And he's uh, he's doing what every man does. He's trying to get his grind on to, just to survive. And then he, he's randomly attacked. Now, the uh, the assailants, they, uh, I believe from from the accents they were trying to portray that they appear to be Hispanic, and maybe it wasn't such a random attack because it seems like they picked on him just because he was white. Now, Arthur knows he has issues, so he's going to a psychiatrist. But it's a, a black woman psychiatrist. And the phrase that went through my mind as I watched that scene was, how can a woman possibly understand how a man feels? Any man who's going for, to a woman for advice on anything is, in my humble opinion, wasting his time. And uh, because he knows he has issues, he's taken multiple prescriptions for pharmaceuticals. But I know pharmaceuticals do not always help, especially multiple ones, because there is a deal called drug synergy, where if you're taking a combination, they will interact with each other in unpredictable ways depending on what you're taking, your diet, and your mood. And I, I got to admit, within the first five minutes, I could feel a lot of empathy for this character. Now, uh, because this is way back in the day, there is no Batman yet. But they show Thomas Wayne, he, uh, from the moment they mention his name, he, he doesn't sound like a very nice person. And, uh, it's like from Jump Street, they're, they're trying to cast dispersions on his character, when in almost every other interpretation we know he is nothing like that. In fact, in some alternate versions, Thomas Wayne himself became Batman. So you're, it is quite interesting. You'll have to look that up if you're interested. So we can see Arthur, you know, just because he's trying to cope. You know, Coach Greg Adams... It has mentioned something called resting bitch face. Well, Arthur is developing resting clown face. So he, he kind of looks happy even though he's not. And believe me, it it is sobering to know that I have been right where this character is. I mean, uh, in one scene, he, uh, he has a pistol, 
And I was thinking, what what is it like to, to hold a gun in your hand and put it to your head and then you make a choice every day if you want to live to see tomorrow? Now, I'm not ashamed to admit that I was so twisted off and desperate once I did a an inept suicide attempt. You know, they are... They've skewed the numbers. We know women attempt suicide far more often than men do. But they do it in ways that are not necessarily lethal. I mean, if a man is really serious about a suicide attempt, he's going to be suck starting that shotgun. And, uh, Arthur keeps a journal where he's trying to keep his thoughts. And uh, I, I did the same thing back in the day. But I stopped because my foster mom was a nosy, intrusive bitch who would go through my things on a regular basis. She'd listen in on my phone calls. She'd open my mail and sometimes not even give it to me. And once she found my diary and I got a beating for what I wrote in there because she didn't like what she saw. And in fact, other people found out I was doing a diary. I was ridiculed and shamed. I was like, oh, that, that's girly stuff. You don't need to be doing that. But I still have notebooks where I put random thoughts, but I keep them to myself now. Now, there's a, a scene where Arthur snaps in the subway. And let's just say he uh, applies a lead injection to people that were giving him a hard time. And, uh, yeah, I, I might have double-tapped them assholes, too. Little nasty-ass bastards. And I noticed uh, a lot of the the SJW conditioning was present. People are on the subway, or no, it was the bus, I think. There, a bunch of them are reading newspapers. And the headline of one article is, Kill the Rich. Well, I'm not envious of the 1%. I want to be one. I want to earn a fortune. I mean, I know I'm not going to be Warren Buffett rich, but I'd sure like to make enough to not have to worry about paying the rent next month. Now Arthur realizes that when he when he finds out his uh, city supported uh, counseling and prescriptions are going away, he realizes that. The woman's not really listening to him. And that's the way most bureaucrats are. They don't listen. They just follow a script. And all you are are a name and a number on a piece of paper. You know, they they don't have an incentive for performance. All they are is shuffling papers to process you and get you out of their face. So, Arthur is trying to, to do other things because he, he's forced to find different employment. And he does a stand-up. And his stand-up reminds me of my first couple of videos when I first uh, first started taping them. I, I just cringe now when I listen to him because I was so inept. But I'm not ashamed because I was honest. And it's one of the things that helped me take those uh, few tentative steps into the darkness before I had enough knowledge to generate that light on my own so I could see where I'm going. And let's see. 
Nobody's laughing now. I can't remember where in the movie I, I saw this to, uh, to write down this phrase. But, oh. Yeah, his, uh, his former friend from his old job set him up to get rid of him so he could keep working, I guess. And I've, I've had former friends turn their back on me just like that. What was that song from the old days, uh, the OJs? They're smiling to your face and all the time they're trying to take your place. Backstabbers. I've had plenty of quote friends who have done that kick me to the curb and turn their back on me just because I did something that they didn't like. And In one scene, he's uh, he's kind of desperate for a safe space, and he actually crawls inside the refrigerator, literally pulls all the shelves out, pulls the food out, gets in, closes the door. But I've I've felt just like that uh, when I've times when I was desperate to retreat to the man cave or. Earlier when I was homeless, just the back of the Jeep. It was the only space where I knew I was mine and I was at least temporarily safe. Now, I wonder, you know, as they showed more of Thomas Wayne, it's like, man, this is not what we're used to hearing. But you wonder, you know, how much of it is true? You know, are they they deliberately setting him up to be an ass clown, a bad guy, just because he's rich? Of, of course, we do know the answer. But it's like, man, you know, uh, everybody lies these days. You're not getting information anymore. You're getting propaganda. Who can you trust? And to, to see this guy, you know, I, I know exactly what it feels like that to have your life shatter and you try to pick up the pieces by yourself. And knowing that you can't find them all by yourself, but you, you want help. And instead of help, you get ridicule, shaming. Jokes and insults. I, I've been right there. And the, the one thing that I noticed that really resonated with me was, uh, you know, just as the, the Joker became an alternate persona for Arthur, that's the way Sifu was with me. In those desperate times when I was seeking validation and no one seemed to like the real me. No one seemed to care or even wanted to know anything about the real me. Or if they did see something, it would be a turnoff. And it, just like with Arthur's transition, it's an escape. It's a coping mechanism. It, it's unfortunate that some people don't want to take the real you at face value and they only will accept a substitute. It's a, it's a byproduct of chameleon skill. I'm, I'm able to do it, but it's not always a good thing. So uh, when he goes on, uh, goes on the, the late night TV show, they, they did a pretty good job doing a recreation of the 1960s set for Johnny Carson. Back when late night TV actually had some entertainment value and people with talent. I wouldn't trust any of the raggedy motherfuckers on late night TV now if I could drop kick him into a F5 tornado.
and hearing the Joker give his little speech on the air, it reminds me of the, the quote that RPM has in, in the end of his HMT videos, that the most dangerous man to society is one who has nothing left to lose. And I know there are a lot of people that are like that right now. And I think that's what's scaring a lot of people. And that's what, uh, that's why they had all that hype about incels and such. Now, I'm a monk and I've, I've made a, a partial adaptation to that lifestyle but I know there's a lot more people out there that are stuck and believe me I have no hate or insults to anyone who calls himself an incel because you, you can see if you're rejected by, by everyone what are you supposed to do? If you can't share anything of the real you and have someone acknowledge that it's that it has value, it is hard on you mentally and physically at times. And uh, when when he did his double tap on the show, it reminded me of the the animated feature the. The Dark Knight Returns, when the Joker character showed his ass on the TV show there. That that's a two-parter. I I highly recommend that you uh, that you see that. You see Batman, who is he's retired and he's doing a lot of brooding and drinking, but then he decides to take a level of badass and go back on active duty. And it actually gave me a lot of encouragement, even though it was fictional. It's like, here's a guy who withdrew and tried to ignore what was happening, but he couldn't anymore. And he went back to doing what he did, what he did best. Ugh. So, uh, it was about a two-hour movie, but it sure did not feel like two hours. It was amazing. So, I highly recommend you go see this movie. And at, at one point, just something in my mind said, Yeah, th this is a red pill movie. It's showing somebody trying to cope. Of course, in the Joker's case, it could be black pill. But the one thing uh, that really stuck in my mind, and it's the last, the last part of my little scribbled in the dark notes, is that uh, the name Joker was not applied by others. He chose it himself. And the real Arthur at the at the end of the movie has pretty much ceased to exist. Now we know that uh, the Joker character is actually uh, pretty much a a psychopath but you can see in this movie how he got pushed over the edge and I can sympathize with him I've been closer than I want to admit sometimes to snapping like a dry twig myself so uh I'm, I've finally done, done with my rambling, and uh, I hope 
if you can handle listening to all this, I hope it gives you a little bit of enlightenment. But like I said, I highly recommend this movie. You look at it through a red pill lens and you can see... You could see something very similar to this happening in real life. Because the the modern culture, you know, not only poor people, but people that aren't politically connected are seen as having zero value. Nobody cares about the average man anymore. And you can see the societal pressure to conform and obey that it could push somebody over the edge. And if it happens in real life, of course, they're going to blame us. But there's some lying motherfuckers. You people behind the scenes pulling the strings that chaos is what you want because you think you're going to be able to step in after the chaos is over and still rule. Well, I'm not sure about that. So, brothers, I'm done rambling. I'm going to get out of here and let you get on with your evening. And remember, as Mike the MGTOW man says, no retreat, no surrender, MGTOW for life. Peace out.